The nervous system is divided into two major parts. First, the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spine. The central nervous system is where all information and signals come to and from. It is central to all the activity in the human body. Second, the peripheral nervous system. This is what brings signals in and information out from the central nervous system. For example, the peripheral nervous system brings signals in from sight, smell, touch, and even pain and brings those signals and information to the central nervous system where those signals and information are processed. When information and signals are brought to the central nervous system, it will process and determine what type of response is required and sends the message or signal out to a target cell, either within the central nervous system or out through the peripheral nervous system to a target cell. That target cell could be a skeletal muscle, an endocrine cell, which is a cell in the hormone system, or to an organ like our heart to increase the heart rate or to decrease the heart rate. Signals and information are communicated through neurons, which are nerve cells. Our bodies have a complex symphony of billions of neurons. In the next part, we will learn more about them. In part one, we learned about the nervous system. In part two, we're going to learn about the neuron. There is an intricate symphony of billions of neurons communicating throughout the body. The neuron's job is to receive, process, and transmit messages. This communication is powered by electrochemical signals. There are a variety of different types of neurons, and like snowflakes, no two neurons are exactly the same. Here is one type of neuron. It consists of a cell body, dendrites, the axon, and the synaptic terminal. The cell body is the manager of the neuron and contains genetic material. Dendrites are hundreds of hair-like branches that come off the cell body. The dendrites are receivers of the neuron. Receptors are found on the dendrites and receive the messages from other neurons. The average brain is said to have over a trillion receptors. When a signal or information is received by the dendrites, it is brought into the cell body for processing. This can create an electrical impulse that carries the signal through the axon and into the synaptic terminal. The synaptic terminal is where the neuron will release its message. These messages can be communicated to any cell depending on the location of the neuron and the message it wants to send. For example, if the target cell was a skeletal muscle, the message could be to contract the muscle and cause movement. If the target cell was the heart, it could communicate to slow the heart down or speed the heart rate up. It is important to know that neurons do not touch, but communicate via chemical messengers, neurotransmitters. In the next section, we will learn more about those. In the last video, we learned about neurons. In this section, we will learn more about neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers used to send information throughout the brain and the body. Over a hundred neurotransmitters have been identified. Some key neurotransmitters and the messages they send are acetylcholine. This neurotransmitter aids in learning, attention, alertfulness, and muscle movement. Serotonin. This is the mood neurotransmitter, and it is involved with well-being and happiness, the sleep cycle, and digestive systems. Dopamine. This is associated with movement, pleasure, and addiction because it creates a motivation to repeat an action. Noradrenaline. This is part of our body's fight or flight response. It contracts blood vessels and increases blood flow. Adrenaline. This is produced in stressful or exciting situations. It increases heart rate and blood flow. It gives us a physical boost or heightened awareness. Endorphins. These are our body's natural painkillers. 
They are released during exercise, excitement, and during sex. Glutamate. This is one of the most common neurotransmitters and it directs cells to fire off their messages. Its opposite is GABA. GABA calms firing nerves and is involved with motor control and vision. Neurotransmitters and the messages they send are so crucial to human life. Neurotransmitters are created in the cell body of a neuron. The raw materials that the body uses to synthesize neurotransmitters are nutrients. In the cell body, neurotransmitters are packaged up and stored in vesicles and sent down the axon to the synaptic terminal with mitochondria. When a message is received by the neuron through its dendrites, an electrical impulse is sent to the synaptic terminal and the neurotransmitters are released into the synapse. This is the space between two neurons. When the neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, they attempt to find their corresponding receptor and bind to it. GABA to GABA receptors, serotonin to serotonin receptors, and so on. This will result in a signal or message being sent to the receiving cell. Neurotransmitters can also be reabsorbed back into the axon terminal from where they came from, or they could be consumed and destroyed by enzymes. This is a constant cycle that is happening. In the next segment, we will look at the neurotransmitter that benzos directly affect, GABA, and its corresponding receptor. In the last video, we learned about neurotransmitters, some of the messages that they send, and how crucial they are to human life. In this video, we will learn more specifically about GABA, its corresponding receptor, and how benzodiazepines work. GABA is a calming neurotransmitter, or more formally known as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. When GABA is communicated, it relaxes or suppresses the target cell's function. Specifically with neurons, it stops them from firing. GABA can communicate nearly everywhere in the body, as long as there's a GABA receptor on the target cell to receive the message. We learned about receptors when we learned about neurons. Receptors are what allows the messages to be received. It's important to know that if there were no receptors, messages could not be transmitted to the target cells like other neurons, endocrine cells, skeletal muscles, and more. Because we are focusing this discussion on benzodiazepines, we will look at one specific type of receptor, the GABA-A receptor. There are a variety of different types of this receptor, and it is made up of 19 different genes. The main types of genes we will focus on are from the alpha 1 through 6 family, the beta 1 through 3 family, and the gamma 1 through 3 family. There are other genes that go into making this receptor, but for the purpose of this discussion, we will focus on the alpha, beta, and gamma. Our gene expression determines which combination of these will be used. Think of this like a cookie recipe. There are many different types of cookies, but generally they share the same basic ingredients and process. The GABA-A receptor is made up of two copies of the same alpha genes, two copies of the same beta genes, and a gamma. In order for GABA to cause its calming signal to be communicated to the cell, two GABA neurotransmitters must bind to this receptor. On some GABA-A receptors, there are benzodiazepine binding sites. Note the word some. In order for there to be a benzodiazepine binding site, the GABA-A receptor must be made up using the gamma-2 gene and one of the alpha genes 1, 2, 3, or 5. When benzodiazepines are taken, they increase the ability for GABA to bind to this receptor, causing the cell to receive more of the message and more often than it otherwise would. Taking benzodiazepines will reduce activities in the cell throughout the entire body. 
This is why it's prescribed for anxiety, sleep disorders, epilepsy, and for a muscle relaxant. In the next video, we will learn about how the body responds to this effect and its consequences. In the last video, we learned about GABA, the GABA-A receptor, and how benzodiazepines work on them. In this video, we will learn about some of the consequences of what taking benzodiazepines can have on the body. When an outside chemical structure like benzodiazepines change the way communication processes are carried out in the body, the body will counteract the effects of the drug in an effort to maintain homeostasis. This means that the body works to maintain an internal constancy and sets off a chain of events that are detrimental to the health of the individual. Cells have control over the messages that are being communicated to them. If a cell is receiving an overload of a particular message over time, it will compensate by reducing the number of receptors that will receive that particular message. This is called endocytosis, and the cell pulls back the receptor of that signal that they're being overloaded with and either destroys it or recycles it. This is more commonly known as receptor downregulation. When there are less receptors, less of the message can be communicated. The cell can also change which type of GABA-A receptors to make. Changes in gene expression of genes that are used to make up the receptor can make the cell not as receptive to benzodiazepines. Remember that not all GABA-A receptors have a benzodiazepine binding site. When this happens, more GABA will be reabsorbed back into the signaling neuron from the synapse. Over time, this sends a message that too much GABA is being produced and the body will compensate by making less GABA. This is exactly why someone can experience withdrawal symptoms without even making any changes in their dose. The body makes changes that counteracts the drug. Certainly, if the drug is removed, you can imagine the mayhem that will ensue. Without the calming influence of GABA, cells will fire off all over the body unchecked. Please refer to our symptoms page on our website listed at the end of this video. You will see that withdrawal from benzos impacts nearly every system of the body because GABA is supposed to be working on nearly every system in the body. Until the body upregulates the GABA receptor and the production of GABA, bizarre withdrawal symptoms will persist. Thank you for watching this series on benzos in the body. Remember, you should always consult a doctor before making any changes to a medical treatment. Never stop taking a medication without carefully following a medically supervised taper.